In this section, we'll focus on the advanced section of the paging. As we know, we already have the grid set up. We'll go back to the edit behaviors. And you can see we have inside the paging section, we have the current, the page link class, and the pager class itself. What does current do is when you have a pager, the selected page is basically the current page link. The page link CSS class is all the rest of the link which are not selected. The pager class itself is the entire page section area. So uh, we'll not do any changes right now. We'll just cancel on that. What we want to do is we want to add a new CSS file. So we can al always do it inline, but let's uh, go to our uh, resource folder. And what we'll do is we'll just add a new item. We'll add a style sheet. So we'll name that as uh, custom page and uh, just add on that and we have a section here so let's drop the rest and I'll just create current as a class I'll create the link as another class and pager as a third class what we'll do is we'll just design that quickly uh, in the current we want to have a font we want to have the font to be bold and uh, let's have the font a little color that is good enough the rest of the links let's say uh, we just want the link to be uh, let's say bold and we want the rest of the links to be let's say green we generally don't want green but uh, just for the sake of understanding it we just put it as green the pager section, we want the pager section to have a background. You can select images and all that. Uh, let's have a very clean background. We'll have a little grayish background on that. So that is all I wanted to do. So we have a couple of things in here. Let's close it, save it. And let's associate that to the grid. So how do we do that? Go back to the source. Somewhere in the header section, we'll drop our file. So we have custom page we'll have to create the link so we have the link as in custom page as a style sheet now since we already have the link what we'll do is we'll go back to the design and we'll set the behavior again so the current was current and the link was link and the pager class was pager itself so we just set the current the link and the pager as in class files for the CSS. We'll apply that, okay that, and let's fire it up and see how it works. So as expected, we had the links as in green color, the pager section as in a little grayish, and the selected item as a red color. So this is what we wanted to do, we wanted to change in the link CSS classes. So we just saw the custom CSS on the paging area. We'll just close on that and let's go and check out another property. So what I wanted to show you now is the paging client events. We have initialize event, we have page index changed event, we have page index changing event. What we'll do is we'll put in three event handlers here. And uh, for that, what I think I'll do is I'll add a text box uh, in this, in fact a text area. So let me drop a text box and let's name it as txt box. Let's have that as a multi-line and uh, I'll have 10 rows in there. Maybe increase the size a little bit. That's good enough. What next I wanted to do is I already have a script ready to associate in there. So what I'll do is I'll first have the edit behavior. I'll add all the events. For the benefit of not typing out wrong things, I've already copied into my clipboard. So I have it here. Initialize. Changing and changed so now that we have the names in place 
let's apply that okay on that we'll have to go to the source and I wanted to show you this property uh, somewhere around behaviors what you can do is you can say client side events and you will have this Ajax response you can add that also as an event so what I'll do is I'll just add that as a response and let's name that also so we have all those things in place we'll go to the header section somewhere here and I have the script also ready it's a very very simple script I'll just explain that a little so what we have is we have the text box so we, I'm doing a get element by ID I'm finding the text box and to the value of it I'm putting in the string which we will pass through each of the uh, each of the client side events so I have four client side events here I have web data grid view initialize I have the page changed I have the changing and also I have the Ajax response so getting all these things in the place we are all set for that what we'll do is we'll fire it up and see how it works so I go to the next page I get the changing event I get the changed event I get the Ajax response let me do that again and you see we have all the client side events firing so you just saw how we can do the client side events let me just close this one so what we just saw was the advanced paging section of the web data grid thanks for being with us infragistics on the web at infragistics.com